It has been a hot minute since I've discussed Legend ZA on the channel because there's been literally no news about it since its reveal. But since it kind of feels like we might be due for some news fairly soon, and just because it's been so long, I am here to talk about some crazy Legend ZA information that you should definitely know if you don't already. Obviously, since nothing official has been released since the game's reveal as of the making of this video, the following are just observations by the community, but to me, they are compelling enough that they are worth bringing up and knowing about, and are most likely going to be playing a factor in one way or another. Additionally, I wanted to shout out the people who are actually making these observations, because I'm honestly just here to discuss them with you guys, so shout out to Soul Silver Art, Mordecai's Mons, and Pokebeach over on Twitter for all of these points that I'm about to discuss, and you can check all of those people out via the credits link in the description. Getting into the meat of this video though, the thing that I want to start off with is Rayquaza's involvement in this game. Since Legends ZA is obviously set in Kalos, Kalos is naturally what everyone is focusing on, which makes it easy to forget that Hoenn is basically half of this whole Mega Evolution story, and with Rayquaza being tied to the origin of Mega Evolution itself, it certainly seems like a possibility that it could play a factor in the game's plot. And while it is just speculation right now, that honestly seems to be all but confirmed confirmed with an observation that was pointed out by Soul Silver Art, which is that the symbol that we see in the reveal trailer that seems like it's the logo of some kind of organization highly resembles the shape of a quasar, which is a celestial object that appears in outer space that is also described to be extremely luminous, which also fits perfectly with Lumio City's theme of light. Additionally, if you haven't noticed it yourself yet, Quasar is literally where part of Rayquaza's name comes from, and that is true in Japanese as well and not just English. So putting all of this together, it seems practically like a guarantee that this organization is going to have some sort of tie to Rayquaza, and most likely through its Mega Evolution connections. And while it certainly does make sense to have the the Hoenn elements of the Mega Evolution plotline play a factor in this game, the idea of crossing them over into Kalos, especially when it does potentially involve Rayquaza, is an extremely exciting idea. When it comes to Rayquaza and the origin of Mega Evolution, however, it has always been at the center of an inconsistency, because while it is said that Rayquaza achieved the first Mega Evolution, it is also said in X and Y that Lucario was the first Pokemon to ever Mega Evolve, with this tale even being immortalized at the Tower of Mastery with a giant Lucario statue. It is said in those games that long ago, a trainer and his Lucario traveled to Kalos and achieved the world's first Mega Evolution. With that in mind, if we look to Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is obviously like a sister game to Legends ZA as a fellow Legends title, we meet the character Rai, who owns a Lucario and is also the ancestor to Riley from the Sinnoh game. After defeating Rai and Lucario in a battle, he mentions wanting to test their skills in other places, and it is most likely the case on top of this that Legends Arceus and Legends ZA are going to take place at roughly the same time period, due to the real world events that they are most likely based on taking place during the same time period as well. Again, it's all just speculation at this point, but the evidence seems very strong that Rai and his Lucario could also make an appearance in Legend ZA and could be the very trainer and the very Lucario from that story in X and Y who arrived in Kalos and achieved the world's first Mega Evolution. And with both of these original Mega Evolutions potentially appearing in the same game, it'll be very interesting to see how the game attempts to clear the air on who was truly the first Mega Evolution. 
The more you think about it though, this game truly does have some insane potential to honestly make some crazy connections and blow the door off of everything that we know about Mega Evolution. For example, I just mentioned the very intriguing prospect of the Hoenn elements of this story being integrated into the Kalos side of things in this game. And there's also another really interesting connection between this game and what's going on in Oraz that seems to further solidify this potential even more. Mordecai Mons pointed out over on Twitter that in Oraz, Mauville City went through a complete overhaul and more specifically, it was completely redeveloped. It's also mentioned in Oraz that Mauville City's redevelopment was modeled after Lumios City, which itself is being redeveloped in Pokemon Legends ZA. At the very least, this is a really cool connection that brings this element of the games together full circle in a really cool way. But it's also another thing that seems to be drawing in the Hoenn side of things into Legend ZA rather than it just focusing on the Kalos side. So it's very possible as a part of the bolstering of this connection that we could see things like ancestors or relatives of Hoenn characters appearing in this game. Like maybe say an ancestor of Watson. In fact, I could absolutely see a Watson ancestor character being someone who is potentially heading the redevelopment of Lumio City, just like Watson headed the redevelopment of Mauville City. That would be a perfect parallel and a great way to bring in the Hoenn half of this equation, especially because when you consider that the organization that we just talked about earlier, who, for all we know, could be involved in this redevelopment, also have Hoenn connections due to that Rayquaza connection we talked about earlier. So there just really seems to be a lot going on here with the Hoenn side of things that seems like it could truly make for a fascinating storyline. While this game seems like it could connect a lot to Oraz though, it certainly seems like it could also have connections to other games as well. Fans are always looking for connections or hints to upcoming games in the most recent games that have released to this point, and there seems to be a significant one in Legends ZA that traces back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If you look closely at the new map of Lumio City in Legends ZA, you can see a building with a logo on it, and that logo pretty much identically resembles the logo of the Synchro Machine from the Indigo Disc DLC of Scarlet and Violet. The Synchro Machine was a really cool feature that allowed you to walk around as basically any of your Pokemon, and many have agreed that it feels like the kind of thing that is being tested in Scarlet and Violet for a more fully fledged integration in a later game, which evidently seems like it indeed could be in Legend ZA. With a feature as significant and out there as literally plain as your Pokemon, it's hard to say how Game Freak would implement it on a grander scale. But as Soul Silver Art points out, it seems like it could tie into the theme of bonds that the Kalos region has. We see this theme at first with the bonds between trainer and Pokemon that are required for Mega Evolution, and then it goes even farther with the bond phenomenon that results in things like Ash Greninja. So could the Synchro Machine in Scarlet and Violet be preparing us for a bond phenomenon type of feature where we literally become our Pokemon somehow in order to carry out various quests in the game? Or maybe it's just once again more of a side type of mechanic like it was in Scarlet and Violet, but either way, it seems like that is the sort of direction that we might be heading, and it does seem like it's going to tie into the overarching themes that the Kalos region represents, which is really interesting. And now we are going to look into the thing that everyone wants to know, arguably above anything else, and that is the release date of this game. Currently, all we know is that Legend ZA is coming in 2025, with it being anyone's guess as to what time in the year that will actually be. 
it kind of seems like it's gonna be later in the year, to be honest, because like, why would Pokemon let a holiday season pass them by without putting their major game in that time frame? Or at least during a more active time of the year, like the summer, once we have passed the slower periods of earlier in the year. Even if we are talking logically, however, that is all still just conjecture and speculation, but we might actually have some concrete evidence that this will actually be the case thanks to an observation made by Pokebeach. As they mention on their website, it seems like the TCG is potentially giving us a window into when we can expect the game to release. As based on the upcoming release schedule of certain TCG products, it seems to put Legend ZA into a release window of later in the year. This is because, as Pokebeach points out, when Legends ZA does come out, there's inevitably going to be some accompanying TCG sets that pair with the game in order to promote it, just like the TCG always does. However, the products that are currently coming out for the TCG seem like they are not only not connected to Legend ZA, but are also possibly stalling for time a little bit. Like, for example, with the new Trainers Pokemon feature that was just announced, and with a new Team Rocket set that was also teased as well, both of which are known to be lasting into next year, making it all the more unlikely that Legend ZA would release release in early 2025. It seems like the earliest that we might be able to expect it because of this is around the summertime, with a potential for a fall or holiday release as well, if the Pokemon Company are keen to take advantage of that holiday season, which most of the time they are. What are your guys' thoughts on all of this, though? I would love to hear what you think about all of these different ideas and information in the comments. And once again, shout out to Soul Silver Art, Mordecai's Mons, and Pokebeach for their observations. And once again, you can check all of them out via the credits link in the description. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video as well. And until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.